Jesus is King. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. This is it. This is part five of our five-part series. We've looked at Jesus tried and crucified, and we end on the fact that Jesus is King. Jesus is Lord. No one else can have this title, and no one else is going to get this title. And so the sooner we believe it, the sooner we can be saved. Before we go into the last part of this series, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you watched all the studies. If you haven't, make sure you check out the playlist. You can see that playlist on the viewer player where you're watching now, or you can go to our website, which is at changeministry.org and see not just this particular Sabbath School study group. You can see all the Sabbath School study groups from, I think, going back to almost 2018. So that's a lot of videos, over 2,000. And I pray that you enjoy them and that God uses them just as much from yesterday as he's using this word today. So now let's go back to Mark 15, but we're going to kick it back up to the top. It says that straightway in the morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council and bound Jesus and carried him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him directly, are you the king of the Jews? And he answered and said unto him, thou sayest it. So Jesus is asked directly, are you the king? He doesn't ask him, are you a king? He says, are you the king? Now, even though while he, he hones it in and says the king of the Jews, when Jesus says what he says, he doesn't deny it. He owns it. And the reason why Jesus can be king of the Jews, because Jesus is king of all. Jesus is king of the Jews and he's king of the Gentiles. What Caesar pretended or portended to be, that's who Jesus was. By virtue of the fact of what he was about to accomplish on the cross, he is redeemed, he is reclaiming, he is ransoming what was lost. Now, the testament to the truth of Jesus being king, it might be hard for someone to buy if Jesus says it himself, right? I mean, obviously, if someone's claimed to be king, you're not going to go to that person and say, are you the king for evidence? So we need to find evidence from exterior or, or outside sources. Are there any in the Bible? Oh, you better believe it. So we're just going to look at two to show us that Jesus, he is the king. One of those witnesses is here in Matthew chapter 17 to Jesus being king. It says that Peter now said unto Jesus, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Where were they? They were on what we call the Mount of Transfiguration, where Jesus is now glorified and glorified where the heavenly presence, who he is as the son of God is revealed in the earth. And not only that, he is there with Moses and Elijah. It says, if thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee. OK, Peter's talking, say one for Jesus, one for Moses and one for Elias. Now, it's so interesting that you see this this equation between Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. But so that we can know that he's not just a prophet, but he's the prophet. He's not just a good man, but he's the son of man and the son of God while he yet spake. While Peter was chirping, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. So bright got on top of bright because it was a voice out of the cloud which said, this is my beloved son. The father is speaking and he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And everybody's quiet because the verse six says, and when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and they were so afraid. <laughs> Peter went from talking to worshiping almost immediately. Why? Because here is the witness of the father himself. God speaks and he says, Jesus is Lord. He is the one who is about to stand in the gap between you and me. Now, that was God's witness to say this is the king. Our heavenly father says he's king. But guess who else said Jesus is king? I know you won't believe it unless you read it. Mark chapter five. Let's stay in the book of Mark. Go back. We looked at this story, but look who is witnessing to who Jesus is. Mark five, two says, and when he, when Jesus was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit. What's another name for an unclean spirit? That's a fallen angel. What's a fallen angel? That's a demon. That's one of the angels who were cast out of heaven. Revelation tells us in Revelation 12. But when he saw Jesus afar so off, he ran and worshiped him. He does what Peter 
and the brothers had to figure out to do. No one had to tell the demons what to do. When the demons saw Jesus, he ran and worshiped him and cried with a loud voice and said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus? Now, he's not just Jesus, because you might just say, well, that's just Jesus, son of man. That's just Jesus, that boy who was born in Bethlehem, and we're not really sure who his daddy is. That's just that Jesus, that really good preacher, that really good prophet. Here is where we see the great separator. He is Jesus, the son of man. But look at what the demon says. What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? <laughs> I adjure thee. Now, here's how you know he's talking to the king of kings and the Lord of lords because the demon starts to pray. He already started worshiping. He falls down and he cries with a loud voice. But now he starts praying. The demon says, I adjure thee by God. He's asking the son of God in the name of God to not torment him. <laughs> This thing is awesome. This is the truth that you don't see any record. There's no, I don't care what religion you look at. Is there any record who of whoever that divine being or whoever that divine entity is? Is there any other place where you have the enemy of that divine entity or of that supposed uh, uh, divine whomever where the enemy is beseeching that God? You don't see it. You know why you don't see it? Because it doesn't happen. A lie is not going to pray to a lie. A lie was only going to fall to the truth. And here we see the liars praying to the truth, praying to the way, praying to the light to show us this is the one. You don't have to look for anybody else because nobody else is going to lie down so that you can live up to God. Nobody else is gonna let you take their garment and put it on you. Nobody else is gonna let you smite them and then turn the other cheek. Nobody else is going to die for you in order for you to live. Jesus is Lord. He is Messiah. There's no one else coming, so don't miss him.